Hey, it's Steve Vivek from BreatheWingChun.com. Today we'll be talking about chain punches. This is the most recognizable technique in the Wing Chun system and definitely for the beginner practitioner, the primary tool that you'll end up using, mainly because of its simplicity and ease of use and also uh, the amount of time it takes to learn how to do it. The chain punch looks pretty much like this. There's straight line punches done in quick succession. I see these performed wrong quite often. I see people milking the cows at work. They're cycling their punches. There are circular punches like this in the system, but this is, uh, this is not the case when performing the chain punch. So things to bear in mind when you're doing, when you're doing this, this technique. Firstly is to keep good structure. The structure we've gone over in, in many a tutorial now is the seven key components used in a dynamic fashion. Keep that here, this still applies. Need to be relaxed, need to be uh, heavy in your shoulders and your hips. So if we've got an opponent here and he has a strong guard, <coughs> I punch in. If I'm stiff and not relaxed and uh, my shoulders out of pack for instance and he's strong, I'm never going to get past his arm. It's not going to happen. If I relax, <coughs> I sink my weight, I'm going to be able to crush through, crush through his defense. If he's too strong, of course, and he presses out, I'm just going to, because the punch is relaxed, I'm just going to let it go in here. Which brings me on to the next bit. The punch, the punches have sensitivity, especially in the Wing Chun system. So if I place my fist on the target, he moves my arm. I can punch again. I punch again. The arm stays relaxed. <coughs> the better you get, the more sophisticated this is. So he can start to move my arm and I turn into a bouncer. Then I punch. Then I punch. Can start to use my jack so I can use all these different tools against his against his defenses. But the main thing, especially when you're starting out, is to not put all your emphasis into the fist. By that I mean make sure this is intense. If I punch in and Jamie moves and tries to block my block my arm, and this happens, this is no good. I mean all that training for nothing. All he's going to do is just a a crazy you know crazy street fighter's block. He moves my arm. I've lost my position. He's just going to hit me and I'm done. The idea is. Let him block me as hard as he wants. <coughs> He's got to get a bunch of punches for his trouble. That brings me on to the next bit, the chain punch. Basically, as, as I'm hitting and he, and he decides to move my arm or, or not, depends if I hit him or not, as I come through and I find my target, I keep hitting the same target over and over and over until you know there's enough con concussive force that he goes to sleep or there's a neurological overload. He starts to cover up and, and the fight's done, you finish him off. Brings me on to structure. <coughs> I've seen this done really badly so many times. Again, this is uh, an extrapolation of the, uh, an extension of the, of the seven key components. We'll just gloss over it over, over here. <coughs> Leg drive, hip recruitment, core activation, using the spine, shoulder pack, good elbow and wrist alignment. You need all these. I can't be punching like this, I can't be punching with my shoulder up, I can't punch with my hips back or leaving my feet back. I see people lean, don't lean. This is tactically bad. Imagine, and also getting my shoulder out of pack, this is an extension of that. So if I punch and my shoulder comes out and I leave it out, look at this, he can, uh, Jamie can just pull my arm, I can't recover. Or he can, or even worse, he slips my punch and now he starts doing his takedowns and he's, he's clinching or, or he's wrestling or whatever. So it's elastic, I punch and the shoulder comes back. Shoulder comes back into the socket. Okay, a lot of people say punch and, and pull your shoulder back at the same time. In reality, this doesn't matter. This doesn't happen, especially when you're using a lot of force. Okay, so in this situation, if he tries to pull my arm, I still have control of my body. If he pulls me hard, I can still hit him. If he tries to go underneath, he's not going to be able to do it. I've still got control. Remember, if you can't control your opponent's body, you should always be able to control your own. So, another mistake I see when people do the chain punches is this. They're doing these funny back fists, punchy things. This is not right. For one, he, it's easy for him just to walk through these. It'll just collapse my structure. The punch is flexible. Look, I can punch in with the correct alignment. He's, uh, James steps in, he steps away. Um, I collapse and extend on, this is my choice that this happens, not because I have bad structure. The punches are flexible, so they, I, I own the space. 
I start to fill the space like gas. So this, this is a lab, but this is a misunderstood punch. It does happen, but in this scenario, let's just say I have the guard, uh, he has a guard over here and I'm punching over his arm. As I punch over his arm, he can be quite strong, he stops me from coming in. So I give another, another angle of force, another vector. So I'm screwing in. By screwing in, it gives uh, another load of uh, pressure to his arm. I can just crush through his defense. Again, if he's too strong, I'm just going to do something else afterwards. That's okay, but that, that's when the arm screws and you end up with the fist in this position. Also, uh, while we're on structure over here, you move the whole body as one unit. No tension. I'm not trying to, for instance, if I attack on the outside, my elbow stays bent always. If I attack on the inside, I try to make my arm straighter. When I make my arm straighter, I'm not doing like a dumbbell race. I'm not trying to lift his arm up, even though he's uh, James smaller than me. He can press on my arm, really press, press. I'm not coming up. It's not happening. Yeah, it's not happening. No matter how big the guns are, it's not happening. But if I keep all the, the seven key components in place, and I drive out of the earth it, as one unit. He can press, press, and okay. I can just push him away. Easy. I can break through this, uh, break through his guard, and he's done. When delivering the force, uh, can you grab that pad for me? When delivering the force, uh, I touched on this earlier about ha having the hand tense. It's not like a karate punch. I'm not going and punching, punching the pad. I'm also not trying to drive through. There is a punch like this where you push them away, but really it's, it's like a bullet. The bullet hits and the target drops. So you'll see, uh, I keep the arm relaxed when I'm hitting. You'll see the, the vibration in his body, not, not so much the pad. Yeah? He'll feel it's like a gunshot, right? So keep that in mind when you're hitting. Nice one, it's not, not trying to bully it through. Just relax it and, you'll, and you'll, the palm should feel it through the pad. I hear all the time people talk about using three joints when they're punching. No. Right, so pulleys in the system. If the more pulleys you have, the easier it is to maybe lift something. The, the more joints you use when you're hitting, the more efficient the power production is when you're punching. It's really simple. I can use my wrist, my elbow, my shoulder. The spine, the biggest load of joints in the body, it waves. It waves and it gives you extra distance when you're hitting. There's an element of hip, knee and ankle when you're driving through. It's like one big wave when you're hitting. Don't rob yourself of this power and this distance. Watch. I'm throwing a punch here. This is as far as I can go. Now I'm going to articulate the spine. This is a great drill for articulating the spine, by the way. And if I add that onto my hip, I can still hit without having to lean forward, without having to step forward. It gives me an extra under half a foot when I'm hitting. That's enough to break his nose for sure. Finally, Wing Chun people constantly ask me about how, how are my guys able to hit so hard, all my students. Basically it's because they like to train. This is the main thing. Wing Chun people by nature don't want to get, you know, don't, don't want to sweat. People want to punch hard, guess what? Punch more. Punch everything. Punch a punch bag. Punch a wall bag. Punch focus mitts. Kick shields. All different scenarios. Punch people, right? Your training partners, obviously. The main thing is to punch a lot if you want to get good. If you want to back up, your conditioning should always back up your skill practice. So do some supplementary exercises. Uh, we've got a few tutorials about on the quad press and some other special exercises you can do. They're secondary, not primary. But do those as well. Get a sweat on, get conditioned. The more conditioned you are, the longer you can train for. The longer you train for, the better you get. So keep that in mind. Shoot us over any questions and uh, we'll see you in the next video.